Hi, this is Justin Hunter again. This is video two of two, talking about pairwise testing methods in the context of a simple banking example. So now we'll talk about what happens when you need to iterate your test plan and include specific requirements or business rules. Secondly, how can we remove impossible to test for combinations? And then third and finally, we'll look at easy ways to generate much more thorough sets of tests quite quickly, turning the coverage dial up far beyond just a simple requirement to get every single possible pair. So let's dive right into it. If we first need to address this business rule and ensure that it's covered, applicants with checking accounts get a discount. The idea of checking accounts is nowhere in the plan, so we would need to add that. Simply a matter of adding a parameter called checking and having a couple options associated with it. A second business rule would state that applications for condos in Miami must be reviewed by an underwriter. In this case, we already have property types of condos in the plan. Significantly, we have the idea of Florida, but we don't yet have, at least we, until I added them, we didn't have the idea of Miami as a specific location that needed to be tested as an independent value in a way that we'd be sure that it also gets tested in at least one test case with condo. By breaking Florida into two values, we can achieve that goal. Third and final business rule we'll look at, applications without asset verification in North Carolina must be reviewed by an underwriter. That too is quite similar. We didn't have the idea of with and without asset verification, so we've now added that into the test plan. Now, let me back up a minute and explain a little bit more the thought process behind that. Don't focus on the expected results. Instead, primarily focus, if not exclusively focus, on answering the question, how many test inputs will be required to trigger this specific business rule or requirement? And which specific test inputs need to happen together? to trigger that business rule. Applying that to these three business rules, we've drawn an X through the get a discount. That's an expected result. So long as we have several test cases, or one test case, with a checking account, we'll be able to identify and observe whether or not a discount gets applied to that particular test case. Second business rule is handled much in the same way. It takes two test inputs here to trigger that business rule. We've already got condos in. We needed to add Miami and we did that. We don't need to worry for now about the must be reviewed by an underwriter. We don't have underwriter anywhere in the business and anywhere in the test inputs and we don't need that for now. Business rule three, very similar. You get the idea by now. Two test inputs need to be together to trigger that business rule. North Carolina was in already. We needed to add asset verification because it wasn't yet in the set of test inputs. And the point about must be reviewed by an underwriter. So long as we have both of those together, we can observe whether or not that expected result happens. So we don't need to include, include that in, in the plan at this point. So now with our refined list of parameters and values, we can create a new set of pairwise tests. As soon as we click on create tests in HexaWise, the algorithm starts to generate the smallest possible number of tests it can figure out to make sure that all the pairs are covered together, are tested in at least one test case together. And here, if you pay attention to the number of test cases we had started with, about 20,000, we've increased over 100,000 total possible tests and still kept the required 
pairwise tests at a, a very low number. It's just 18 tests. Moving on to the second topic we wanted to address, how can you remove impossible to test for combinations? In this scenario, let's assume we have an application that has a set of screens that a user would go through. In an early screen, a question is, are you a bank employee? For anybody who answers yes to that question, they see something different on a later screen. Specifically, those people do not see the opportunity to check the box for it. this is an investment property. So if that was the case and we were testing this through the GUI, it would be impossible to test those together. We would want to remove that combination of values from the test cases. We haven't removed it yet. And in fact, we see in test case number 15, we see employee paired with the investment uh, type of property. So in order to remove that, we would go back to the Define Inputs page and mark what's called an invalid pair. And to identify an invalid pair in HexOIs, all we need to do is find the first value, employee, highlight this icon to the right of that value, click on it, find the second value that we don't want to appear in the same test test case with the first one and click on the same icon to mark it as part of an invalid pair. We see over here now that invalid pair is registered and when we click on create tests that particular combination will be removed from the set of tests that are generated. The third and final topic to address just quickly here is creating test plans of different coverage strengths. You see on the create test screen we have many different choices. We can create a three-way set of tests that will generate tests for every possible combination involving three values. So will income equals high and loan amount equals small and type of property equals apartment be tested all together in the same test case? Yes, absolutely. If it's one, two, three values, and we've got a three-way interaction solution, every single triplet of values will be tested at least once together in a test case. Of course, we needed to execute more tests in this case to achieve that higher level of thoroughness, but that's the trade-off that's involved. You can, with each more thorough test case selection we make as we move from two-way to three-way to four-way, we'll be adding more test cases that will need to be executed to achieve that higher level of thoroughness. I'll just conclude by inviting you to sign up for a free account at HexWise, not a free trial account, but a free actual account. We give them away for free for teams of up to five people. And it is quite a powerful way to design your tests. Many people try this approach and never look back. Thank you.